Hello everyone and welcome to my spotlight on the Mechanism Fusion Reactor. Now, this is a massive build to build one of these. I'm going to go into everything you need from producing the fuel, which is a convoluted process, to building the reactor itself, to powering the reactor, to start the fusion reactor reaction, uh, using high-powered lasers, which requires a massive amount of power. Uh, we're going to get into how you do all of this stuff. So, this could be a long one. Um, now, some of you may be familiar, I've actually built one of these already uh, legitimately on my server. I should have built it in a test world like this before trying to undertake it myself because uh, it's, it's a serious, serious build. But once you get it going, it's a thing of beauty and it produces so much power. That's fun to make. So let's get started with uh, how you produce fuel. Okay, so the first thing you're going to probably want when you start producing fuel is to get one of these electric pumps. Actually, ideally more than one, but one for a bare bones setup. And what you're going to need to also make is a filter upgrade. Now, these things not too hard to make. Um, the filter upgrade needs to go in the upgrade slot there, so you just drop it in there. And then this is going to start, instead of producing water, it's going to start producing heavy water. Um, and then you pump that out. Now you can use the mechanism pumps. I'm just using the fluid, um, sorry, the fluid conduit from Ender IO. Now you're going to need to pump one of those into an electrolytic separator um, to start producing this. That's liquid deuterium. Um, there's none in there at the moment. I wonder why. No, I think it's just producing as much as it can as quickly as possible and it's getting sucked right out. So yeah, that produces, turns the heavy water into liquid deuterium um, and oxygen as well. Um, so you're going to want to hit dumping here to get rid of all of the oxygen. That way, or you can do maybe uh, dump excess and then you'll start building up some oxygen inside it. Um, and then it won't you know, go out, it won't stop once oxygen fills up. Nice. Um, so you're also going to need to power that as well. So you're going to need a fair few machines and a fair bit of power to get started. Uh, this is probably the easiest part. Anyway, once you've got your um, deuterium uh, being produced, that's going to go into, well, pretty much straight into the reactor, but you're also going to need one of these chemical infusers, but we'll get to that later. Now, here's the other thing you're going to need, and this is quite the build. Now you might not need them as tall as what I have. Actually on the server at the moment I'm only running these at a height of 10 blocks high. Um, these are 16 blocks high and these are basically solar evaporator um, multi-block structures. They used to be called salination plants but now they don't just make brine, they also make lithium as well. So, um, yeah, so hence the name change. So depending on what, ver actually, if you've got the version that has reactors, these are going to be called uh, solar evaporation blocks, solar evaporation controllers, and the other block you're going to need is the solar evaporation valve. You'll also need four of these advanced solar generators. Now, to build all this is a lot. The... Solar, uh, the advanced solar generators don't come cheap at all. Um, each block of this, I believe, is probably about is it four or eight copper. So put that all together to produce um, two of these about ten height uh, on my on the multiplayer server. I had to, I used a digital miner at max range and dug up all of the copper, then or doubled it. And that was just enough. So, <laughs> or it might not have even quite been enough. So yeah, you're going to need a lot of copper primarily to build this. But um, yeah, and a lot of other things. So it's a big build. Anyway, once you've built your multi-block structure, now to do that, it is uh, four by four. It's hollow in the middle. And um, yeah, build it as tall as you want. Now, also something else to bear in mind is... These have a multiplier for their biome. On the server, I actually used a biome painter from Extra Things, I think, Random Things mod, and turned this into a desert biome because you get a multiplier on how quickly these heat up. 
Now these are solar powered, so how quickly they heat up is actually kind of important because every time it becomes night, they're going to stop working and they're going to lose their heat. So you want to heat up as quickly as possible and start um, producing brine or lithium again. So actually, now let's get into how um, the liquids and stuff go. So you're going to need to pump water into it. You can use an electric pump, but these um, uh, transfer nodes, a liquid one, is a lot faster, especially if you pump a whole bunch of world interaction upgrades in there. Though an electric pump may actually be fast enough. Uh, cool. Um, so you pump water into it, and then you need to extract um, so into one of these valves, and then there's another one of these evap solar evaporation valves right here, and we need to suck the brine out using uh, something that extracts. Uh, you can, I believe, just use the mechanism pipes as well. I think they're called mechanical pipes for liquids in mechanism. And have that going into another solar evaporation tower. Um, and, oh, actually, sorry, I'll just go... So here we can see water, and that's getting turned into brine that's getting sucked right out. This is at max heat. Yeah. Um, and on this one, basically, what we can see is not a lot because it's all getting sucked right out, but the brine's coming in and it's getting turned almost instantaneously into liquid lithium. So here, here we go. Brine in this tank, liquid lithium in this tank. Now the liquid lithium then gets pumped out of another valve and is coming into this, a rotary condensentrator. I know that sounds weird, it's a mouthful. Um, now, to set one of these guys up, it's going to require power. And basically, the, the important thing is uh, this toggle operation. What this is going to do is turn the liquid lithium into gaseous lithium. Basically turns it from a liquid into a gas. And we need it to be a gas. So um, to do that, by default, I think it turns gases into liquid. So you've got to hit this toggle operation. Um, so you can see it going that way, that way. So we can probably see, yeah, the liquid lithium starting to build up in there. If we toggle this, we'll see the li liquid lithium's coming out and, yeah, getting turned into just lithium in its gaseous form. Then we're going to need to pump all of that uh, lithium into solar neutron activators. Now, just one is probably not going to be enough. I think you're going to want at least two or three of these. Probably, ideally, you're going to actually need... This is just a sort of bare bones setup. You're, uh, you're probably going to need maybe even more of these towers and more of these solar uh, neutron activators to keep the reaction going in the reactor. But we'll get into that later. This is just how you... The basics of how you um, produce the, uh, the fuel. So, um... Yeah, once the lithium goes into uh, these solar neutron activators, it becomes, I believe, trilithium or something? Uh, tritium, sorry. Tritium, liquid tritium. So, yeah, and then... So that's pretty much it. These, again, only work in the sun. So that's a, another thing to remember. All of this stuff, solar-powered, only going to work during the day. So I don't know if you've got maybe a Miscraft Age or something you want to create your liquids there. Miscraft Age, where it's, you know, eternal day. That could work. Neat. Um, and again, now the tritium comes in over here. Now, as you can see, this might look a bit strange. What I've got is... Um, Basically, you can put the tritium and the deuterium directly into the reactor. And if we look at the fuel here, um, we can see basically those come together, should come together, to form DT fuel. Don't know why that's empty. Oh, maybe it's just because it's got no power or something. It probably needs a bit of power, yeah. But here we can see a chemical infuser, which is doing the same thing to create DT fuel. Well, you're going to need one of these chemical infusers with some DT fuel in it because you need these holoram, uh, holoroms, I think that's how you pronounce them, and you've got to fill them up with DT fuel. Um, you've got to do that because in your reactor, you need a holoram here in order to, uh, to start the reaction, which uh, I will explain in a moment. But anyway, guys, look, that is how you create 
um, the DT fuel for the reactor. It's a it's a big process. Just going through it just then may not sound like a lot, but uh, unless you've got a bunch of resources, especially copper, to create these evaporation towers. Um, to create the solar neutron activators as well is quite a process. So, um, yeah, it's a big, big build. Anyway, guys, that's how you create fuel. Let's move on to managing and creating the reactor. So now let's take a look at the reactor itself. It's a great looking multi-block. It's made pretty much out of these reactor frames. Uh, you'll need a laser focus matrix. You'll also need some reactor ports, probably at a minimum two, and a reactor controller as well. Now, optionally, you can also use this reactor glass. Now, the reactor glass, this side kind of represents um, how much reactor glass you can actually use. On the edges, you can't have reactor glass or the reactor won't form the multi-block. It can be on the kind of insides, just like this, but otherwise it has to be the reactor frame. Um, as for building the reactor itself, I mean, it's fairly easy as you can see. Just kind of imagine this sort of star shape, this kind of nine by nine with one in uh, the center sort of on each side. And um, yeah, and that's basically what the reactor looks like from each side, so that's how you make it. We can kind of imagine it, I guess, as a square on a kind of 45 degree angle. Um, but you just build that on every side and that's how you make it. Fairly simple. Now you can get um, power out of the reactor using the reactor port, the same thing you use to put the fuel in. You might notice just since last time I've added an extra line coming out of the chemical infuser, um, an advanced pressurized tube, which is um, bringing the fuel that was being produced in the uh, chemical infuser. It's putting that straight into the reactor itself. The reactor though, I think once it gets a bit of power, it can also combine the tritium and the deuterium into DT fuel. Cool, now about getting power into the reactor. So if we just take a look at some of the stats here, uh, well actually let's look at everything. Here we can see the amount of RF it's producing and how much is being stored. At the moment, it's zero, zero. If we take a look at the heat, this gives you all the information about um, well, the heat, and but how much uh, plasma you've got. So we're trying to create a fusion reaction, which is going to create plasma, which gives us our heat, which is our power source. So the plasma, we see how much plasma heat we've got in there. We see the case heat. And then it depends if you're creating steam, you'll have water in here, and then you'll have your output of steam here. Otherwise, um, it's just going to produce RF. Now, the critical point for creating kind of the plasma reaction and really generating some heat and some power is 100,000 Kelvin, I believe. Let's just check the statistics. Um, so this is for steam. This is just if you're not making steam. And the ignition temp, yeah, is, oh, uh, sorry, one, 100 million Kelvin, not 100,000, I apologize. Um, yeah, so it's pretty hectic. It's got a, um, to sustain the reaction, I believe it's got this uh, inject, a minimum injection rate of two. Uh, if we look at fuel, we can see our injection rate. I've got it set to four. I might have just set it to two, I wonder. Because the thing is, it's going to be burning f through the fuel very quickly. And what we'll notice is, probably with this setup, I don't think I'm actually producing enough fuel to keep the reaction going indefinitely. So that's something to bear in mind, especially when it becomes dark and you stop producing fuel. It can be hard to maintain the reaction. And you'd think, oh yeah, just starting up the reaction again. Not a big deal. Well, let's get into starting the reaction. Um, have I gone through everything here? So we've got our fuel being produced. Yeah, we've got how like all the heat works. And we'll see this in action in a second. Um, yeah, okay. So actually starting a reaction. Um, this is where these things, which have been making that annoying humming noise come into play. These are lasers and uh, laser amplifiers. Basically, um, so the lasers create heat. Let's have a look at how a laser works. I've got one over here. So um, basically it just accepts power from the back and um, this laser beam that's produced 
is kind of neat. If I come over here and hit this, we'll see that the laser actually, um, it will break blocks and will set you on fire and will kill mobs and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of neat. Um, I don't know why it's still shooting downwards. I think that's a bit of a bug. Um, but anyway, you can uh, adjust which way this thing's facing. It, it shouldn't still be shooting down like that. I wonder... I think this is a ghost because it's not setting me on fire. Anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, so the lasers are quite neat and you can use these laser amplifiers to set their direction. But also the laser amplifier has a neat little thing as well. Basically, it can store power. So if you give it a redstone signal, it will stop um, outputting uh, the, the laser here. And it will actually store this as sort of like heat um, RF energy. And yeah, so at the moment... What I'm doing is firing a whole bunch of lasers into this laser amplifier, which is then putting, as you can see, a rather large amount of energy into this laser amplifier, which is also getting some from these lasers here. And if we right click on that, we can see it has stored, um, geez, uh, um, let's try to think how many, so that's like a, a thousand million uh, RF, a, a lot. Now, uh, this has been on for a while, so it's charged up, um, and I might, like, let the energy out and let it start the reaction, and then we'll charge it up again just so you can see, but it takes a long time to charge up the power in one of these. This is using a whole bunch of lasers themselves, not too cheap to make, um, neither are the laser amplifiers. Um, and it, I think it, uh, maybe takes maybe 10 minutes to charge up to, oh, actually no, 10 minutes is too much. Really, I think you need a hundred million RF stored in this to create enough heat in the reactor to start the reaction. We've get, we're going to have more than we need here. So let's get started. Now also just remember, I did mention before, you need the hollow arms in order to start the reaction. But if we um, hit this lever, basically, and this, I'm just making sure, yeah, this is angled right. You can see the side that you can't really see through. That's the direction the laser is going to fire. So, um, anyway, without further ado, let's see the reaction. Bam. So, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's our reaction. And, oh, what I forgot to do was, i got to turn these on, so we can see how much power we're actually getting. I probably wasted... A fair chunk of power there because you get the biggest burst at the beginning as we can see it's consumed the hollow arm but if we look at how much uh we're putting per tick we're putting out 1.3 million rf pretty crazy um per tick so that's 20 times a second we're putting so we're putting out every second uh, well over 20 million rf just madness. Now, I think we got a bit of a boost because um, the heat from this laser was incredibly hot when we put it out. Um, and remember how much uh, power that, you know, that, yeah, uh, that was, had quite a lot of power in there. Um, so, I mean, I'm just trying to think, that would have been, I think there was a billion RF sitting in this thing. It must have been like a billion RF sitting in this. Anyway, I imagine this will be filling up quite quickly. This was empty and we're already at 1.8 billion RF. So uh, we put a billion RF into the laser to start it up, but we've already gotten more than that out, which is kind of cool. Um, we can see the reaction going along nicely in there. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, this is a draconic energy cube. It was... A, Honestly, because of the amount, of, like the scale of the power we're dealing with, um, I just realized the only way to see how much we're actually getting is using Draconic uh, uh, Energy Storage. It's the only mod I could think of that deals with um, power at that level. Um, nice, let's have a look at how we're going for fuel. So this is probably going to be showing as like empty, yeah, but um, fuel's being fed into it. Uh, I'm just wondering if, when it's going to stop. I, I had a fair bit stored up. This is producing tritium I don't know there was a fair bit stored up so I imagine it's probably going to run for quite a while um, but one thing that will be an indicator is look how much uh, we're producing now we're now putting out 630,000 RF a tick and so that's about well we were doing about 1.2 million before so the heat is cooling down um, if we look at 
not sati heat. Here we go. So here we can see, look, a lot of plasma. It's burning really hot. We must have got up to about max temperature. But the thing is, we're not providing it with enough fuel to keep burning and sustain that. I yeah. So I think if we were giving it more fuel, it would uh, it would probably go faster. I'm just wondering if I can edit this uh, fuel rate. Um, and see if that. Oh, okay. Sorry, up the fuel rate and look at that. So we're feeding it more fuel, and now the temperature is actually going up. So I should have checked that. Um, but I do imagine at some point I'm going to run out of fuel. So yeah, but we can sustain the heat as long as we're feeding enough fuel. So that's uh the injection rate into the reactor. That's something to bear in mind, because that will um. Yeah, I, I guess it probably needs to be around, I don't know, four or five, something like that, to keep the reaction going. As long as you're providing it fuel, it should be okay. Um, so anyway, as we can see, we're making just terrifying amounts of power, already up to uh, 3.6 billion. Now, once you've fired up your reactor and you've got the uh, reaction going... Um, there's no real need to leave your laser amplifier on. You can kind of, well, don't pack up your lasers because you'll need them next time you want to start another reaction. Say if you run out of fuel or something, or for whatever reason it stops being uh, self-sustained, you'll need to fire up the reaction again. But besides that, it's kind of just a waste putting energy into um, this laser amplifier. You may want to store up about 100 million RF in order to start the reaction again. And we'll look at that again in a second once this is charged up. Because, yeah, last time we're at about like a billion RF, but actually all we really need is, I think is about 100 million. So we'll just try it there. Um, and one other thing which I haven't mentioned is, um, don't break these reactor blocks with a pickaxe, do it with a crescent hammer or some sort of wrench or something. Because otherwise they just get broken and you lose them, which I found out in my, uh, yeah, when I was playing on the server. So if you're going to move your reactor or anything, just make sure to use a crescent hammer. Nice. Um, okay, so let's just see how this is going for power. What are we at? 70. So as you can see, it does take a little while to charge up. But I guess with this many lasers, if you've got the 100 million RF to feed into the laser uh, amplifier, then yeah, you're ready to start your reactions. And as we can see, this is still getting power at a, a great rate. Let's check, we've still got plenty of fuel coming in, which is good. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I have got, maybe this setup is actually enough to keep it going. Bear in mind that I've got eternal day here. So you're gonna have to have fuel reserves to get you through the night when the solar um, factory is not producing. But look at that, we're at a, we've found a nice kind of balance. So if we look at our fuel here, uh, sorry, our heat here. Now that's, we could probably turn up uh, the fuel rate and maybe make that six and it might burn a little hotter and give us some more um, heat. So let's just see, is that Climbing, yep, that's climbing, and I guess you can alter that depending on how much fuel you're producing. An important thing to note is though, we're at 470 th uh, million uh, Kelvin at the moment. The big thing is to keep it above 100 million Kelvin, otherwise your reaction down here is going to stop, and um, yeah, you won't really be producing power anymore. Does uh, won't be you won't be consuming fuel, and it will just cool down and all stop. So that's an important thing to bear in mind. Um, now let's just take a look at how you're going. Oh, we just hit 100 million. So what I might do is kind of stop the reaction by, I'm just thinking probably easiest way is just going to be to break the reactor. There we go. And put down the frame again. And ta-da, it's been rebuilt. Um, now that's something to bear in mind. You'll know you've built it correctly when you get that little red thing. Um, we might still have it, it does actually still have heat in here, so as long as you don't actually break the reactor controller, it still maintains its heat, but as we can see, we're not getting the animation of the uh, fusion reaction anymore, so that is just going to cool down. It's probably, if we look at fuel, we'll see it's not using the fuel anymore. That's full and it's just sitting there. Um, so to start our reaction again, we'll give it another hollow arm, which just got con uh, consumed. Oh, 
It was already hot enough. Um, <laughs> so there you go. If the casing is still hot, oh, you still got, sorry, plasma in there um, sitting at um, over 400,000, uh, sorry, 100 million uh, Kelvin, it will uh, fire straight up again. That's kind of cool. Uh, but I wanted to just show the laser again. So I think if I actually break the reactor controller um, and pop that back down, we should have, we got fuel, but we got no heat. So there you go. So we lose heat if we break that. Cool. Let's put this in here and let's see if we can flip a reaction with, that's probably got over a hundred million in it now, 130, but that should be enough to kick off a reaction. Let's find out. Bam. No, it's not. Okay. Wow, what temperature did that get it up to? Feel? Heat? Okay, that did not... No, alright, so you're going to need a lot more. You're probably going to need something in the vicinity of... Uh, actually, 500-ish, maybe. 400 million. Well, that was a bit of a dud. Let's try again at about 350 million RF stored. So we've got... Uh, yep, yeah, holoram... I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Let's see if this creates a reaction. No, um, let's see the temperature though that we got up to, and that was, oh, that must have been just shy. I imagine that must have gotten up to about 88, the, uh, 88 million Kelvin. So we need to get to 100 million Kelvin. So I'll let this charge up again to about uh, 400 million RF. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and or over that and it's charged up to about 450 million RF. So let's see if we can get a reaction this time. So flip the switch and boom, okay. Let's see what temperature that actually got it up to. Um, heat. Well, it looks like once it uh, actually creates a reaction, the heat, you know, expands exponentially. So there you go um and if we maybe just increase the oh wow the injection rate is zero so that's bad um let's set that up to like seven see if we can maintain that heat still dropping rather fast fuel rate so let's see if we can just crank that right up see if we can get it to hold at a certain temperature Oh, it's going back up, so yep. there you go. Probably need somewhere between 400 and 450 million uh, RF stored as heat in one of these lasers. Um, oh, sorry, in one of the uh, laser amplifiers. Very good. Okay, and as you can see, we've really, yeah, wow, wow. Uh, probably don't need that injection rate to be all the way up at 10. Let's bring it back to 9, see if maybe... Um, well, it's dropping, but I imagine it would stay up somewhere probably pretty hot. And as we can see, uh, wow, and we're producing a lot. 1.1 <laughs> uh, million RF a tick. Just crazy. Um, so, you know, you can definitely play around with your injection rates and, you know, keep that at a level so it's somewhere between, you know, maintaining the amount of fuel that you're producing and... Um, bearing in mind that you're not going to be producing fuel half the day at night time, but also keeping it somewhere above uh, 100 million Kelvin in temperature so that your reaction doesn't stall. Okay, nice one. I hope you have found this video instructional. It's a massive bill, but it's a lot of fun. It's definitely worth doing. It's, yeah, quite cool. All right, guys, well... That's it from me. Thanks for watching. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if there's anything, um, any suggestions you guys have about using um, the fusion reactors, about mechanism and stuff. And hit me up on Twitter, like and subscribe, all of that. And guys, I will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.